Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. Today we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the voltage regulator rectifier that's found on just about every machine in the power sports industry, whether it be an ATV, a side-by-side, -side, or a motorcycle. I'm going to walk you through the process of how to test it and how they're put together to where you have a better understanding of what's going on inside of here. The only special tools you're going to need pick up a good digital voltmeter. Make sure that it has this little signal right here which shows a diode test. Now if you don't have one, we actually carry one on PartZilla.com that you can pick up. So once you have your regulator rectifier out on a bench and a good voltometer, meter, we can show you how to get it tested. So let's go. So if you're watching this video, chances are your machine is not charging. Now, if you've already eliminated the possibility of a bad battery and your stator is getting a good output, we have a video on that, by the way. Well, chances are it could be your regulator rectifier because what this thing does is take that AC signal that your stator is developing and converts it into a DC signal that is used to charge your battery and provide power for whatever load that you may be using on your machine, usually in between 12.8 all the way up to 14.123 depending on what type of battery is in the machine. Now the way it does that is what they call a full wave rectification. So what you have there is an AC voltage which is a sine wave that goes from positive to negative through a certain amount of time. And what it is doing is taking that, flipping that bottom half to where you've got a continuous positive AC hump and then it's using what they call a smoothing capacitor to keep it charged in between positive and negative swings. That is what eventually comes out through your positive and negative and goes to your battery and provides a charge to your machine. So with that little bit of background, do you really need to know all the electrical engineering behind it? No. There's a simple way to test those six diodes to see if they're working or not. A diode basically is an on-off switch for current. If you forward bias it, it lets current pass through. If you reverse bias it, it acts like an off switch. It does not let current flow. So what we want to do is go in and test each one of those to see if it's forward biasing and then reverse bias it and make sure that it's stopping the flow of electricity. So we're going to look at three different types. We're going to look at one from Yamaha, one from Honda, and then we're going to finish up with this unit from Polaris. And all these may look the same on the outside. How they work on the inside is going to be quite different, as you'll find out. There's certain ones that we can test, and spoiler alert, there's certain ones that we cannot. So you may want to watch this all the way through to find out what I'm talking about. So let's look at what's going on inside of your typical regulator rectifier. What you basically have here is the stator. That gives your AC voltage and current that is sent into your regulator rectifier. There are two separate parts of the regulator rectifier, as the name suggests. You've got a section of diodes that actually takes the AC waveform, inverts it, and then used with a capacitor, gives you kind of a saw edge output of DC voltage. The other part of that is the actual regulator. What the regulator does is, well, regulates the voltage. With using the voltometer set to diode, you can actually forward bias these six diodes. And that will tell you if the rectifier portion of the circuit is operational or, or not. What you should read on a typical silicone-based diode is around 0.48 to 0.52 volts. So let's take a look at the Honda. This is going to be the positive terminal. This is going to be the negative terminal. So to forward bias, we want to put our negative lead on the positive side, then take our positive lead over to each point on the rectifier itself. And we should see 0.5. And we do. All right, that's telling me that we forward biased each one of those diodes. Now what we need to check is to make sure that it's going to stop current from flowing in the wrong direction. So we're going to reverse it. We're going to put our positive where the battery would be. And then we're going to reverse bias it by putting the negative here. Open. 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 So those three are doing what they're supposed to do. Now, let's go over to the other set of diodes. Now this time we're forward biasing them again, so it should let current go through. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Now, 
if we try to reverse those same three diodes, we should have an open on each condition. Open, open, open. And that's how we test this one. Each one of them, I was able to forward bias it. Now, let's take a look at the Yamaha. These three connections, if they were plugged in, would be going over to your stator, a three-phase stator winding. Your output, this is going to be positive side, and this is going to be the negative side. And if you look on your machine, I believe this is red, and this one's black. We're gonna take the positive lead and go to the negative side. Then we're gonna take the negative lead and go to each point here, and that should forward bias it. 0 0.49, 0 0.501, 0 0.499. So what that just did, it forward biased each one of those diodes. Now, we take our negative lead off the voltmeter, put it to the positive side of the uh, regulator rectifier terminal, and then we'll go to our three points, which would forward bias each one of these diodes. Now, how did that change? Should be some diodes there, right? Well, actually, they are there. The trick is, well, there's other circuitry that you can't measure from outside. Let's refer to the next drawing. All right, as before, those are our six diodes that we're trying to test. There's your regulator rectifier, and you've got these three, looks like SCR type diodes there. What would they be doing? Well, a regulator limits how much current or voltage is coming out by actually shunting out each one of these legs to ground. So now, positive here, forward biasing back, had no problem. It was going against that gate, so we were only reading those three diodes. When we were going the other direction, we were actually paralleling a forward bias diode here and whatever circuitry they were using inside of the regulator on the other side. So it's easy to go in and read the forward bias across each one of these diodes, but guess what? When you try to forward bias these, you're also trying to forward bias these different transistors down here. So it's gonna give you a different reading other than the 0.5. Let's go one step further. Let's look at the Polaris. This would be the plug that goes to your stator. This will be the plug that actually goes to the vehicle electrical system. That's gonna be your positive. This is gonna be your negative. So, let's take our meter. Let's put it to the negative side and see what kind of readings we get. 0.5, we're expecting that. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, okay. It's looking about like the Yamaha was. Let's go to our negative side, nothing. Nothing. Nothing there either. So <laughs> what in the world is going on with the Polaris? Are you telling me that this is only a half wave rectifier? I kind of doubt that. Let's look at this next drawing. Well, is this the circuit that I'm sure is inside this particular unit? No, I can't tell you that. But I think I can explain what's going on. Once again, it was very easy to forward bias these three diodes going back to the battery. Now look what happens when you try to forward bias these back from ground. Well, guess what? <laughs> You're running into a whole network of the regulator that's actually telling it what to do as far as the voltage. So is there any possible way you can take a diode test voltmeter and test through a MOSFET circuit as well as a voltage bridge and then an op amp down at the bottom? It simply can't do it. So that's why it was giving you an open circuit trying to read that direction. Once again, I wasn't in on that design meeting. So, and I don't think Polaris is gonna tell me. So what have we learned from all this? Well, depending on the manufacturer, yes, you could test some of the aspects. Maybe all six of the diodes that are part of the rectifier circuit. Other times, you start running into the regulator side that's gonna prevent you from seeing both sides of the rectifier circuit. Especially with this one, it's not giving you any clear indication of what's going on inside of it. Well, it's a process of elimination here, guys. There's no way to properly test every single regulator rectifier out there using just a voltmeter. It just can't be done. There's too many variables. So what do you do? 
Well, first, you make sure your battery's in good shape. Second, make sure the cabling on the machine is up to snuff, no shorts, no opens. If you can, do a dynamic test on the stator to make sure you're getting the appropriate AC signal sent to the regulator rectifier. And if all of that checks out, well, whatever's left must be the problem. It's gonna be your voltage regulator rectifier. A couple of things that are gonna signify that, either it's not charging at all, or it's overcharging and destroying your battery. So we are here to help. If you need help, get in touch with us, talk to us. We can try to steer you in the right direction to figure out the problem on your machine. Once you've figured out that problem, come see us at partzilla.com where we have all the OEM parts from all the different major manufacturers ready to go. We can get them to you quickly. Listen, we just wanna say thanks for shopping here with us at partzilla.com and we will see you in the next video. Oh, and if you like what you see, why don't you hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. Y'all have a great day.